In our previous video, we briefly explained the principle of cause and effect, and how the cause and effect in the universe is not simply the cause and effect of the physical plane, but there is also causes and effects within the mental and spiritual planes. So in this video, we are going to explain how free will works, as well as how synchronicity works within cause and effect of all the planes of reality. The freedom of the will of the person is to act in a manner undetermined by prior causes. However, another phenomena is what is called quantum indeterminacy. When we explore this topic from the context of the preceding hermetic physics, we find that these two exceptions to the principle of cause and effect are in fact one and the same. The free will of the mind is the indeterminacy of quantum mechanics seen from a first person point of view. Once this is understood, it can be understood why neither actually violates cause and effect, but rather only bypasses it. Firstly, we need to ask what the mind is and what possesses free will. Beyond the first person perspective we have been able to identify, it compromises the wave function. This follows directly from what we learned regarding Hoffman's derivation of the wave function from systems of interacting conscious agents, as well as indirectly from the other approaches previously described. If this is the case, then the probabilistic outputs generated by these wave functions would be identical to the actions of these minds. The quantum probabilistic states pre-collapse in turn would be the inner states of these minds in determined by these actions. Thus, within the framework of the physics we have discussed, the indeterminacy in free will would be identical with the indeterminacy in quantum probability. Though how is this reconcilable with cause and effect? The answer flows directly from mentalism. Casual chains always start with first causes. However, the first cause is necessary for the thing to exist, the mind of the all. The mind of the all would not have this ability to be able to be the first cause unless this ability were innate in the mind to begin with. Thus, mind has the ability to act as a first cause, which itself is uncaused. This does not violate cause and effect, however, as cause and effect says nothing about first causes rather only applies to change of causes and effects. Thus, free will and quantum, pro quantum probability and indeterminacy do not violate cause and effect, but only creates the causes upon which cause and effect acts upon. Now, the range of probability of a wave function is dependent upon its energy value. For example, in the case of quantum tunneling, a higher energy particle will be more likely to tunnel across a barrier than a low energy particle. But in a previous video, we saw that vibration is dependent upon energy. The higher the energy, the higher the vibration. Thus, consciousness at a higher vibration has more free will than consciousness at a lower vibration. This appears to be implied in the Kabbalion as well if we recognize that the higher planes are also a higher vibration. Quote, the majority of people are carried along like the fallen stone, obedient to environment, outside influences, and internal moods, desires, etc not to speak of the desires and wills of others stronger than themselves, heredity, environment, and suggestion, carry them along without resistance on their part or the exercise of the will. Moved like the pawns on the checkerboard of life, they play their parts and are laid aside after the game is over. But the masters, knowing the rules of the game, rise above the plane of the material life, and placing themselves in touch with the higher powers of their nature, dominate their own moods, characters, qualities, and plurality, as well as the environment surrounding them and thus become movers in the game, instead of pawns, causes, instead of effects. The masters do not escape the causation of the higher planes, but fall in line with the higher laws, and thus master circumstances on the lower plane. They thus form a conscious part of the law, instead of being mere blind instruments, while they serve on the higher planes, they rule on the material plane. This is also how the fallen state is condition described before is maintained. Such a state naturally limits the range of their free will and makes them susceptible to the influences of other beings who benefit from perpetuating their condition. Now, a common argument against free will is the experiments from neuroscience like those of Benjamin Labet. Experiments of this kind show that subconscious neurological influences in the brain apparently preceding the conscious volition to act, thereby suggesting that free will is an illusion. 
This would all be true if they were to adapt a naively materialistic view of the world. However, as was discussed before, the particles compromising the material world are not real before they are measured. Furthermore, we saw how violations of the legate gark inequality scale this non-reality up to the scale of microscopic objects. Thirdly, the non-reality as what is observed upon collapse is relative to and dependent upon the frame of reference of the observer. Meaning, if the observer does not see his or her own brain, then from that observer's reference frame, the brain and its processes do not exist as real things as part of our physical reality, but exist in limbo as superpositions in quantum states. When delayed choice quantum racer experiments are brought into the picture, this even applies to observations of past events. Delayed choice quantum racers are variations of the double slit experiment described before, wherein the decision or whether or not to measure the system is delayed until after the waves have gone through the slits. In these experiments, it was discovered that the choice to measure them as particles after they had gone through the slits determined their past history as having been particles. Because these brain processes are part of the same illusory physical world, it would follow that it is also governed by these physics. As a result, from the reference frame of the mind that makes these choices, the past histories of these brain processes will be just as illusory as the past histories in the quantum erasers. Thus, experiments of this verity are incapable of contradicting free will. If this is the case, though, then one may be tempted to ask whether or not other microscopic objects in the material plane also have false histories, if we have not seen evidence for this before. The fact of the matter is that we do, but we do not recognize it as such. This is none other than the phenomena of synchronicity, which is directly related to cause and effect, which we will now turn to. Synchronicity was first described by the psychologist Carl Jung. Some events will occur of a coincidental nature, which are psychologically meaningful. We will think of someone and then get a call from them and so later on. Sometimes these coincidences can be quite profound and defy the odds of probability. These are referred to as synchronicities. These events appear to defy rational explanation, but in fact their existence can be explained very logically if one recognizes the mental nature of reality. If the concept of quantum erasers just described is scaled up to the microscopic level, then it follows that many things we assume to have reality then in fact are in a superposition with many possible histories behind them. For example, before we open a door, many possible people may be behind it. All of them are in a superposition from our frame if we treat macro-realism as false. Each will have had a history of entering the room behind the door. If there is something guiding which state is selected from the superposition, and if that something is meaningfully related to our inner psychological states, then, when we look at the person behind the door, they may coincidentally be someone who is meaningful to us. The mutual meeting would then be surprising in a way that defies probability, and we would call it asynchronicity. All that is needed then is a mechanism to guide these probabilities in the superposition in a fashion that is psychologically significant to us. These wave functions containing superpositions are mind, and what superposition is selected is dependent upon the free and undetermined volition of these minds, which from an outside perspective we think of as quantum probability. As described in a previous video, the entire collective unconscious can be described in terms of these wave functions. These conscious influences beneath our level of consciousness may directly select one outcome from many. If these contents influences are in our subconscious, they would be psychologically meaningful to us and synchronicities are described to be. It is also possible that if our consciousness is psychologically attached or entangled with the situation strongly enough, that it may select these outcomes as well, creating synchronicities in similar fashion. Most people do not realize this on their own, that their consciousness has the ability to do this. However, these occult facts are not unknown to everyone. There are also other interesting phenomena like sinking magic. However, if the viewer wishes to learn about this, then they can check out the Quantum Hermetica where there are more details describing this phenomena.